With the Scottish referendum about to take place, there's a lot of things that we must consider. What would happen to Scotland in the event of independence, and what would happen to Britain? Now, as an ardent supporter of Scottish independence myself, I am, of course, I am of course supportive of any move for them to become independent of imperialist Britain. However, there are things that many people are mulling over, such as what would happen as far as currency? Would we keep the pound sterling? Would we be able to keep our oil, the oil reserves, which basically is two-thirds of Europe's oil reserves that's in Scotland? There's a big major British naval base that's up there. There is just a whole bunch of things that would be, have to be considered, as well as the fact, would Queen Elizabeth basically maintain her position of head of state, which would defeat the whole purpose of independence in general, or would Scot Scotland become basically a republican form of government? Now, it's hard to say what's going to happen. 50-50, the country is split. And whether or not... P and then you start breaking that down onto whether they want republicanism or monarchism, they're also very evenly split. Now, personally, my belief is when it comes to an independent Scotland is this. Scotland should be independent from all forms of British tyranny, all forms of British imperialism. Scotland should be free of the monarchy, it should be free of Westminster, it should be free of British, na any British military, any British anything, pretty much. That's not to say you can't have relations with them, but it's just, I'm just saying, break your ties, cut the umbilical cord. With this basically in mind, we can definitely bring forth a new era for Scotland. Now, personally we also need to look at the economic situation of it. Should Scotland break free completely of Britain, this would mean that obviously they control the main oil reserves in, in Europe. They control two-thirds of the oil reserves in Europe which means given especially the sanctions going on against Russia which provides most of Europe with a lot of gas most of those oil reserves would have to be tapped into basically Scotland would be looking at the potential for a very economically worthy situation were the you know situations with Ukraine and Russia to continue to worsen uh, so basically we do need to kind of keep that into consideration. Scotland is basically sitting on a virtual gold mine for Europe worse situations to actually get worse. Now the thing is there's a lot of different things that go on in Scotland that we're not really aware about and quite frankly Scotland is a country that has pretty much got to, would have to go at its own if it decides to break from Britain. I mean, we are talking 300, 400 years, technically, of British dominance over the region. I mean, hell, the country had the same monarch for 100 years before the Act of Union in the 1700s. So, you're talking years, centuries, of British dominance and Westminster dominance in Scotland and interference in Edinburgh's affairs. The whole situation would also be if Scotland decides to break free, what would then be the setup here? Obviously they need to set up their own national legislature, their own parliament, their own congress, whatever they would want to do. They'd have to set up elections for whoever would become the next prime minister, president, whatever the hell they want to go on on that. Now, they have three options. One, obviously, ch no change at all, things stay the same. The other option is that they go with um, more, more autonomy instead of the devolution of government that they would get 
more autonomy to make their own decisions, which would definitely separate them from Wales and Northern Ireland with their governments in Belfast and Cardiff, you know, respectively. It would mean that Scotland would have a slight advantage over its other, over the other two territories, the other two states of, of the British Isles, but it would basically still be under the immense domination of Westminster. Now, the third option, obviously, is full independence. And as I said, though, this can be defeated, though, in one of two ways. You can gain independence and actually be independent from Britain, be a republic, be whatever you want it to be, or start your own monarchy, which I wouldn't really recommend, but go, you know, but basically my whole point is you could have your own system of government away from the British crown, away from the British parliament, but if you just decide to go full independent and keep Queen Elizabeth as your head of state, then you've basically defeated the purpose of independence because basically you still have that British domineering influence over you. It basically you would have pretty much the same rights as Australia, New Zealand, and Canada to a lesser extent. But basically you'd still be a member of the Commonwealth which would mean that you are still part of the British Empire. So you really need to consider take into consideration that fact. Do you want to keep the Queen as your head of state or do you want to replace it with a president or whatever the case may be? Now also this would bring into consideration what would happen as far as like leadership. Obviously Alex Salmond, who's been a ardent Scot Scottish nationalist and has led the Scottish nationalists all the way to this point here, as well as his predecessors, he is most likely a likely incumbent were he to become the first official leader of Scotland because basically Alex Salmond is practically regarded as the would be regarded as the father of the modern independent Scotland but it's just one of those things what where would you go from there and obviously there's the economic things to consider would you keep the pound would you have your own currency what would happen the other thing would be is would Scotland stay with the EU and NATO would it because basically it would mean because because England is part of the EU and NATO, would Scotland stay with it or go? There are some people that believe that Scotland should have no no business dealing with Europe and and NATO, and I personally agree with that. I don't believe that they should be involved with NATO and Europe and the European Union because those groups are basically a Reich. They're basically an, an imperialist group of people with their own interests. Now I could also go into talking about the rise of fascism growing in Europe too, but I'm, that's not relevant in this video. The point here to make is that Scotland has a big choice to make. Personally, I would love to see a independent Scotland, and we are basically on the verge of seeing a new independent country. I've seen quite a few independent independence movements spark up with Kosovo, with um, Abkhazia, with South Ossetia, with Donetsk, with Crimea, which technically got annexed by Russia, but either way. I've seen many states become independent in my lifetime. Do I necessarily recognize or believe that they should be independent sta states for all of them? No. I believe in Kosovo's independence. Do I believe in South Ossetia or Abkhazia, which basically wanted to break free to become parts of Russia? No. Did I agree with Crimea wanting to go with, go with Russia? No. But I respect them anyway. You know, with all these different independence movements, I support, I mean, 
I support full independence if you want legitimate independence. But what I will I will fully endorse you, I will fully support you. I cannot support, however, pseudo-independence in which you go for independence but then you want to be part or influenced by another nation, by another imperial, especially another imperialist nation. That I can't support. I will respect it, but I can't support it. So Scotland really has a really big decision to make. Do you truly want real independence? Do you want to be free from Britain? Or do you want to basically continue to be influenced by them in one fashion or another? That's the decision that Scotland really has to make with this coming vote. And as well as the, all the other factors, and I don't mean to put pressure on, Scot on the Scottish Nationals or anybody else, but they do have a huge decision to make that will influence the rest of their lives. And I can't stress that enough. The other independence movement that I'd want to just quickly also address that I support to my fullest extent is Catalonia. I wanted to end with that. While everybody's clamoring over Scotland and everything else, Catalonia has been fighting for the longest time for more autonomy and even in some aspects independence. Personally, I have always supported Catalonian independence and I believe that they should be an independent, personally an independent republic, away from the Spanish crown. Now, the reason why I say that is because, much like Scotland, there's a lot of economic incentives that go on with that because, I mean, Barcelona basically brings in a lot of tourism. Barcelona is basically, in Catalonia themselves, is known for being very affluent. It's basically known for being very, you know, being basically a big hub for, a big economic hub for Spain. And quite frankly, it's you know, they pay probably the, the most in taxes to the Spanish federal government. So, in this aspect, we need to consider that as well for people that want Catalonian independence or more autonomy, because they themselves are facing the same situation Scotland is. Do they want to stay with Spain? No change at all. Do they want more autonomy? Or do they want to be independent? There's a lot to consider there. Now, and, and in the same aspects, there's a lot of economic incentives. Now, granted, I look at it at the same way I would in a lot of situations. The, what separates Scotland and Catalonia is that Catalonia typically tends to have much more of an affluent community, more of an up, more of a upper and middle class community. But they also have their fair share of working class people there that also share in the dream of a more autonomous or free Catalonia. And in every aspect, I would want Catalonians to be independent. In fact, I've gone so far that I don't call them Spanish. I call them Catalonians because I personally respect their their culture, their national identity, because they are technically a national identity. And they do have, by all means, the right to break with Spain if they want to. So I've always been a big supporter of that, and I would fully endorse real independence there. But much like with Scotland, if they choose to break free but keep uh, the crown as their head of state then I can't necessarily support it I can respect it but I can't support it because I don't believe in monarchy I believe in republicanism when it, especially when it comes to independence movements it's basically the way I could basically interpret this would be like if Guam decided to declare its independence from the United States but it still wanted to keep the President of the United States, in this case right now President Barack Hussein Obama as their head of state 
that would defeat the entire purpose of the independence movements because you're basically still relying on U.S. aid. Um, there was also uh, something that I also support has always been Puerto Rican independence, and there was a referendum um, last year or the year before that was uh, to talk about what they wanted to do, and they were wanting to join the United States. They actually wanted to be a state in the Union, and they're going about the process of trying to become the 51st state. It's really a hard decision on that one to make, as I supported Puerto Rican independence. I did not support Puerto Ricans joining the United States as a state, and I did not support them being a colony, basically, of the United States. They call it a commonwealth, but let's be real. I support independence movements. I don't support any version of colonialization. Much like I don't support the fact that California has to live day by day a member of the United States when its independence was stolen 150 years ago. It's the same, you know, basically the whole aspect of people who have these this independent spirit but they let themselves be dominated by another imperialist power another western imperialist power so by full means I support Scottish independence I support Catalonian independence but you really need to contemplate what the meaning of independence means independence does not mean keeping the monarch of the nation that you're breaking free from. Independence means you basically tell the country itself to go to hell in the best way possible through the vote of the people. But in this case, people that really want independence, people that basically don't want to have to continue to pay their taxes to basically a pompous jackass that's just going to sit on a goddamn cushion chair all their damn life and be pampered by a bunch of servants. Basically be pampered by the working class. All while they basically look down on us with that smug grin on, on their face and think that they're better than us. That's not independence. Independence is basically breaking free of that and telling them to piss off so it's really one of those things you have to really consider what you want as far as independence Do you, because if you're basically a monarchist if you support the monarchy then by all means you should probably vote to just stay part of your the country you're already for if you do want real independence, then I would suggest voting to become independent. And that's the thing that both Scots and Catalonians have to come to a decision about and be real about. Do I support independence enough that I would be willing to vote for a Republican form of government? Or does my monarchist belief trump my more over my Republican or my independent streak so you have to really take into these factors as well as we go into these elections and of course always being the person I am I will continue to follow up with the Scottish referendum I will continue to follow up with Catalonia and I will continue to follow up with Puerto Rico as well as I try to find things on that so I will this will be something I will try to, to try to update in the future and uh, we'll just see how things go because let's be honest folks this is truly a, mom a momentous occasion going on in Europe it's a momentous occasion going on in, Sp in Spain and Catalonia and going on in Britain and Scotland so we really must take this with the utmost care and respect and respect the people's wishes no matter what
We may not support the outcomes, but we can have the utmost respect and, and in their decision making and just hope for the best for their people. I'm NorCal Nick, leader of the revolutionist movement, and this has been NorCal Corner. Viva la Scotland, viva la Catalonia. Peace.